I welcome you all to this special episode of Engineering Watch Interactions. Uh, on this occasion of International Labour Day, it is really relieving uh, that a representative segment of the educational technology industry is present in this conference hall. Uh, this is probably out of their sheer commitment uh, and concern to augment the quality and access of education uh, through the penetration of multifarious technological solutions. Uh, we have with us today uh, Mr. Abhishek Guleria, the country head of IT platform and display solution businesses of NEC India. Uh, we have with us Mr. Ankur Rohtaki, head internet em of emerging technologies group, uh, ILNFS Education and Technological Services Limited. Mr. Nitin Mehra, key accounts manager of liquid e-learning <laughs> services. Uh, Mr. S. Akhtar, uh, of Green Source Private Limited, which is the national distributor of Mimeo Interactive Solutions. And we have with us Mr. Nikhil Agrawal, Manager, Business Development, uh, Sign Tech Technologies Private Limited. I welcome you again. And we have today with us a very eminent personality, Mr. Santosh Goenka, uh, Executive Director of Business India, who has been the inspiration behind uh, this Engineering Watch interactions. Uh, Mr. Goenka has been a legacy media person building up 100 B2B titles across various spaces. So we would be having the uh, keynote address from him as to what is the objective of today's interaction. Uh, what we felt as engineering watch like organizing bigger events and larger events, uh, the intended discussion and discourse somewhere uh, goes for a six. The time is too short and the topics are so intense and variegated that uh, these uh, deliberations just cannot happen out there. So we felt why not ride on the horse of technology and take these intense conversations around multifarious aspects of engineering and uh, educational technology solutions and uh, send it across to the campuses uh, live as well as deferred live in the form of newsletters and all. So we initiated with our maiden episode of Engineering Watch Interactions uh, with Mr. Rohit Pandey of uh, <coughs> Class Teacher Learning Solutions. So that had a uh, uh, fabulous response from the audience. Like people could log on to their uh, YouTube channels and then they can view what all uh, solutions and what all offerings uh, various organizations are putting across. So that has been the objective of uh, these Engineering Watch Interactions which we are organizing uh, thrice a week and we would be updating you shortly around that. Now I would request uh, Santosh sir to give a brief note uh, about today's uh, interaction which is focused around the objective of penetrating educational technologies to the campuses. So sir will just give a brief note as to what is the background, what is the need of uh, building a larger campaign around it, sir. Yeah. Thank you Raghav for the uh, quick introduction. Uh, I'll just give you a little bit of how we met because someone asked how did you pair up with engineering watch. I think uh, it was a coincidence. A friend actually brought us Raghav for one of the meetings saying that we must meet Satosh Goenka. And uh, there we were very surprised because I had launched hundreds of titles in different spaces. And I'm very passionate about what we call the business communities. And this was a very interesting community magazine for the engineering. And, and uh, when we said that we would like to do some things together, we put up a quick note and the type of areas that he was very concerned about, like 50% of the engineering colleges, you know, going vacant. Now these are serious issues because so much of money has been spent and we need engineers, we need, you know, uh, uh, colleges. Why is it that there is such a big gap? And then, apart from that, we, we understood that now technology has taken a front seat. There are a lot of providers of technology. And once they sell their technology, the problem from the engineering side is that we don't have engineering colleges, is that the people, when they sell us the stuff, and they may not see it. Now, what the reasons are, we need to explore together, whether they are outdated or whatever. So this type of a seminar round table wherein people like you who are from different uh, 
facets of the services sector in all the occupations, whether it's engineering or others. We need to put our minds together and see what are the technologies that can first make a difference you know, to the institutions. Because I think we are living in a very connected world and if we don't do it, you know, we can't be in the 18th or 19th century then. So looking at all that, you know, this whole initiative of EduTech, which Engineering Watch has initiated, and we said being a larger business platform like Business India, which would then take up issues of larger nature and the abstract could be published in Business India to bring about more awareness. And actually on the viral platform which you have, you know, told that you reach out to institutions through the uh, uh, different seminars that you videotape, you'll be able to reach out to many more places and get more views and then we'll be able to work a win-win situation for both the vendors as well as the engineering companies. That's what I get to understand. So the idea is to put our minds together and, uh, uh, you know, whatever we do from time to time, we will be able to fine-tune the mission that Engineering Works has. I think the, the idea is very clear in Raghav and his team said they know clearly what they need to do and they need your support to get, you know, more chiseling of each of these thoughts. So this is an occasion for you all to feel free and discuss every aspect. It can then be captured and, and told to the other stakeholders. And I'm sure uh, this will be a win-win sort of a thing. Now, uh, uh, thanks, thanks a lot, sir. Uh, basically, through our little interactions which we have had with the, the various stakeholders of the campuses and schools and also the various technology solution providers, we felt like there is a lot of uh, disconnect, there is a lot of information gap somewhere about uh, the various solutions which are on the offering. So we have been trying to bridge that information gap by having product reviews in our magazine and through certain events and other things. So the other thing what we felt is there is somewhere a need of a very uh, focused campaign kind of a thing, a year-long campaign which comprises of lots of surveys, studies, success stories like some technologies being used by one school or college. So that school or college if it shares its experience, the other colleges will get motivated because the kind of quality concern which is happening today it can certainly only be mitigated by the penetration of educational technologies. So being Engineering Watch, being someone who has been trying to aggregate and create a, a communication platform between the various stakeholders, we felt is like why not structure it around a campaign called EduTech. So I would without, I would like all of you to please release a small token, uh, I will say a souvenir of uh, EduTech campaign and post that we can uh, share our views as to what this campaign should ideally comprise of how we can uh, uh, structure a joint strategy, a joint, uh, I will say a plan through which we can have a substantial penetration of educational technologies. The other day we were talking with Lokesh Mehra sir of Microsoft. He had five wonderful offerings for the engineering colleges. Now when I asked sir what is the footprint, what, uh, how many colleges does Microsoft IT Academy actually goes? Now considering the budgets which individual colleges have, I think every college should have one or the other such e-learning solutions or things like that because that's the kind of fees which is being charged from the institute, uh, from the students. But hardly from our engineering atlas, we said, sir, at least point out something. So he said it would be difficult out there. They had certain issues on pointing it out, but it was very meager. So with having 4,500 engineering colleges, if we are not uh, saturating the entire Now request Ravi, uh, my colleague who has been uh, interacting with you all on multiple uh, aspects as to how we can take this campaign forward and really make it effective in the next academic year where we can set out certain joint targets to maybe uh, these many of KANs should be established in these many of colleges. So somewhere we have to really think big and saturate the entire educational space of this country because if we don't do it now, we are certainly going to lose the demographic dividend which we have probably got till 2020, the six years which are waiting for us. So I think the onus for that uh, success somewhere lies on our shoulders as well. Like uh, because the penetration of educational technologies will be the criteria for the quality of engineering or whatever STEM education we talk about. So I pass on to Ravi to just moderate this entire session. And thanks a lot. Uh, when we play game for listening, so I'll just initiate and we'll 
Listen on this. Uh, we had a the precursor to this event. If uh, were to taken was our uh, discussion at, during the entrepreneurs conclave, where we had a session uh, known as future of learning, where we had, we had discussed on certain lines that why is this that colleges and schools feel that the technology solutions are being pushed to them uh, down to their throat and. Uh, there are no takers, so there are no people who to take care of their the uh, maintenance part of it after they are sold once. So this is one problem. So you know, uh, I, I'll just try and put a uh, few things around which the discussion can happen. So one is that the thought among the uh, colleges and schools that the technology is being pushed. Probably, you know, uh, the faculty either either few of the stakeholders are too afraid. Faculty thinks that uh, we will get wiped off, wiped off because of this technology. The digital board. Uh, would uh, kind of take away the need of faculty. There is one this one of this thought. Then second, probably the model. I don't know. We, we uh, should we discuss the model also. The uh, the whole idea we were just discussing. I was just discussing with Abhilash sir that uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, publication had uh, called what has happened to one of the uh, leading uh, company in education as subprime crisis of education. The entire model of how. Uh, the uh, products and solutions are being sold to schools uh, from a capex to opex model and then that opex uh, money is kind of being made a financial uh, product and then you know uh, things like that you know which happened in the crime crisis so these are certain uh, packs around which we can kind of initiate discussion so over to the experts uh, one of the things that i'll, I'll point out and uh, we get this all the time. In that, yes, the colleges feel that you know the equipment is, is kind of thrust upon them. Uh, I think one of the reasons for that is that uh, maybe the equipment manufacturers have not done enough to prove the efficacy of that equipment in education. Right. So uh, right now, I'm not wearing the hat of uh, uh, someone who manufactures uh, product or services for education, but just as someone who's been in education for a while. Uh, is that one of the first things that the school or college should probably ask the vendor is that what will the student uh, gain from this? Not just simply that this equipment will uh, will allow better learning. Uh, there should be ample proof, right? That yes, this is how the learning abilities will increase, or this is how uh, the um, you know the concept will be clearer. So there has to be enough uh, scientific proof. Uh, for any particular equipment that is that is installed, or any particular uh, uh, product or service that, that the school or college is employing, uh, there should be a very simple empirical evidence that yes, this has shown that the students are able to learn better. So uh, one of the other things that happens is that there is a lack of education on the product itself. So in most cases, it, it is a transactional sale that happens uh, between the, the vendor and whoever is uh, is procuring that. Right? Uh, the teachers are pretty much kept out of their entire entire loop. So I think uh, the teachers should have uh, a very very important say in in what learning methodology and what learning tools are put in the classroom, and they have to be uh, given the knowledge, not just the tool, right, of using that uh, in the right way. So I think if, if these two things are done in a in a proper way, then the the usage of that uh, technology will be far far better than it is is today. Just to add the, on what Ankur said, okay, I think let's step back a bit before we actually come to uh, deployment and the challenges which uh, we need. I think one thing we uh, have to add, let's step back a bit and understand how, you know, the why technology is so important in education and then we probably elaborate more on how to make it more efficient and more of a
consideration. One, I think reality today we all uh, will agree is that digitization is reality. And it's not in education alone. I think if you look at the entire uh, uh, technology, uh, information technology scenario, if you look at consumers, you look at enterprises, you look at various, uh, digitization is a reality from, from consumer side to large enterprise side. You look, look at any uh, aspect of it, you look at mapping, you look at uh, smart utility, digitization. So education is, uh, you know, considered one of the early adopters of newer technology. And, and so. It is a must and we have evolved, uh, uh, education segment uh, per se, we have evolved from the ages of blackboards and we have moved into digital uh, technology and digitization to education space and it has helped. There are studies which prove that the uh, receptive uh, uh, learning, the, the, the interactivity, the whole digitization, it helps and aids into education uh, per se. Uh, so this is the understanding that technology today is not just an enabler, but it also empowers education. You know, there's no debate about it. Uh, the big concern, uh, which uh, I think is, is uh, now comes, is that how do we make this technology work in the education space? And it is a collaborative effort. It cannot happen as a one-sided effort by a technology company or a, by the OEMs or vendors or by uh, you know uh, the, the players who are stitching. Uh, hardware, software and content pieces and data or even the education institution. Uh, so this, this brings about a collaborative effort between the vendors who are bringing in technology, uh, the, uh, the, the integrators who are actually going and implementing this technology and the students and the education institutions, their management, their leadership and the teachers, they all are part of the ecosystem and they all have to collaborate and partner together to make it successful. And that brings about uh, uh, challenges like uh, development, professional development of the teachers because see this is an aiding technology you know whether it is interactivity into the classroom so that is uh, you know uh, uh, tablet computing or uh, tilt computing or PC there or uh, e beam or Minios or whatever brand of product or the digitization of it. These are all tools which will make the process more uh, 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 from a student's perspective more uh, 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 able to absorb it. Uh, more collaborative, interactive from the uh, teacher's perspective, a better professional way to be more prepared and pass on the information. And also there's a lot of huge amount of information available today. I'll touch that later, but I think one, we need to clearly have the teachers involved. We need to have a professional development program for them from the leadership of the education institution to involve them. That they are not replaced. This is not a replacement of, uh, you know, that cannot be replaced. Uh, but uh, how this is going to help and so that there is a uh, proper growth path uh, for an educator or a teacher as a profession that by incorporating these technologies, digitization, this is your career growth path. So this has to be constant training, enablement of that. There has to be executive partnership uh, involvement from the executive leadership of the institution. That depends a lot. The attitude of the leader of the institution, the, the way he wants to uh, drive technology, what is his mission and goal, that really percolates down uh, to the teachers, to the students, to the audience. That's very important. And I think uh, other part, uh, the resources and the support which Ankur also uh, mentioned. It is very important to not only uh, through various trainings, through various enablement sessions, to share uh, the benefits of the technology, the usage points, the FAQs to uh, not only the teachers who are going to use this technology, but also the students, how this technology is beneficial to them. Because if they are not aware uh, how this technology helps them, they are not part of the process, then it is something like you are just pushing it through. And that's what typically happens in, if we leave it uh, to, let's say, a government initiative or, or a private initiative, I think if we don't complete the collaborative effort and have each stakeholder participate uh, into it, we are not going to be successful in driving technology to empower and to enable education. So, I mean, that's my point. Uh, I will just take uh, this forward. Uh, as I understand it, the, this entire uh, scenario and the, if this were to compare, this uh, education is a sector, if this were to be compared with different other sectors, as you know, I, I personally feel where we are today and uh, this kind of scenario because we, I personally have been with, all, with schools or with colleges for the last five years and in and out how uh, any kind of sale is done, either in a classroom or a laboratory 
or on any school or colleges where ERP solutions, these are the different products and services which are available. And there is software or hardware which is sold in classroom or in a laboratory or in a school or college as an institute as such in, uh, in terms of an ERP solution or to connect that with an external entity. Either the external entity is a corporate for recruitment or vendors and so on and so forth. So these are the different uh, solutions, uh, software and hardware which kind of constitute uh, broadly the education technology domain today. So as I see education evolving, it's just the last 10 years that most of the schools and colleges in private domain 10 to 15 years that they have come up and along uh, uh, as it is with other sectors when when that core sector is emerging the other supplier sectors emerge and kind of they organize they take some time i think we're going through that transition period and and this is transition period the uh, uh, there are uh, because because uh, we daily encounter uh, strange things like uh, you know we just saw that AICT should we look at MB colleges and engineering colleges was Supreme Court's ruling that they are not the regulators we should see it and uh, the other day during our jury meet we were interacting with one of the senior person in NASCOM and she said do you have 4500 colleges we thought we in IT thought that there are only 600 colleges in India so you know we are grappling with those uh, fundamental questions as such so this gives an idea probably that we are in this transition phase and there has to be something has to be done to kind of, so that the whole transition is smooth. As uh, sir you gave an idea that uh, one is if there is a parameter or a, uh, or a study of how is it before that solution is, how is the situation, uh, you know even if I today uh, the very easy uh, analogy to this is if I am doing a training or an assessment to a student, if I know that students, students current parameter, current number or current uh, standing, after that product of software or is you know that service is done on that, what is the status after that? So this transition would probably or this uh, this clarity would probably give the owner of the education institute a uh, little confidence that yes I am kind of the confidence is the problem today. So this transition may be. Uh, a digital board which is sold or a, uh, or a projector solution which is being sold. So I think how was the scenario before it and how was the scenario after it? There is nobody who is doing this kind of exercise, that is one. And second, in that interim period of selling, carrying it forward and getting result out of that, if somebody can handhold them, can train them, I think that is what you had mentioned. So. Broadly, I could find out these two things, which uh, you know, uh, to my idea of problem sound convincing. That one is you know finding out those that first mark and what before and what after, and second taking some you know somebody should be there who can take them through this period. So you know, the rest is all exactly.
This is something similar that we also did for one of our esteemed clients, Jet King. They were also very reluctant that we have been teaching through the normal book and board methodology. Somehow, their correct their correct phrase was, "Our teachers ko ab PPT badi mushkil se samjhana aaya hai. Ab kahan digitize karwa rahe hain?" But then we did a control group study that you just discussed. So we digitized their content and we had a batch run for 20 sessions because one or two session is not a good sample. They have a hundred hours course and we did it for 20 hours that represented a two sample. Now what we did, we took two separate batches with identical geographical background, family background, economic background and their educational background. Like most of them should be 10 plus twos, a couple of graduates here and there, correct mix of male, female and a common trainer. The trainer would first train one batch with the traditional methodology. After that, the trainer would undergo the digitization training and teach the other batch with a similar profile through digitization. And then we shared that this makes a huge impact because we took three, uh, three levels of feedback from the trainer, from the owners and from the students. Now students, every time we asked, the common feedback was, it was more of an edutainment. So they hain, video chalta hai, picture ki tarah samaj mein aata hai. Now that, because the TG that they operate with are barely 10 plus 2 types. So for them, they could understand more. And when we went deeper into the research, very small things like they work with hardware. So people who did not understand through digitization, they were not able to understand the points behind the CPU. But the ones who did through digitization, they say, no, that video is not the same, the same thing is the same thing, the same thing Whichever way they were able to, but they were able to grasp more. And the best part about the research was, at the end of the research, when we asked the trainer, do you think your batch will perform better in digitization or non-digitized way? He said, obviously digitization. It was the kind of absorption of students was there with digital. Secondly, when we talk about, like you talked about the sale process in an engineering school or a B school, what I have seen as of now, in a B school or any other school, you have feedbacks or the decision making unit is more or less either the treasurer along with the dean and one more influencer. But what we need to understand as uh, Sir was rightly saying that you need to actually take in teachers, that particular faculty, what, how they feel that they can add value to the students. At the same time, you also need to understand from students how they perceive value can be added through technology. There would be clashes in that, but then there has to be that common area and that should be the place where you actually hit on. Because most of these decisions are even like, I, I just passed out like three years back from B school and computer consa lagna will be treasurer, they'll go either by the minimum cost policy or the relationship with the vendor that has been going on. So, this particular process, it's very hard to break because it happens in almost all industries everywhere. But I think that would be one key area to address. But you need proper feedback from the students as well as because they are the ones who are going to absorb that. Similarly, like for Jetting, we were proposing a tablet solution. So, the student says, if you tablet, you will have to load the apps. Bhi load kar so that was actually a question mark to us. We did not go ahead with that because the course was too huge that it would take 15 GB of the space. And if he doesn't have space to download his games, he is not going to take this time. And again, when it comes to like the uh, educational sector will pass on the cost to the students or not? Definitely they would because we've seen like five, six years back, what was the B-school fee? A private B school would charge somewhere in the range of 3.5 to 4, 4.5, 5.5. Now the same schools have their fee in this range of 10 lakhs. Initially, they people were reluctant that would giving a laptop to an MBA student will he be reluctant in buying that? First year was a bit difficult. Next year, almost every other institute was giving laptop as that. So yes, it's taking a bit of time, but slowly it will take care of. I think I think Nitin uh, well said, but I'll just you know add on to three ways to it. One, you mentioned about 
studies, uh, you know, reference studies or, or uh, some data points available to form, uh, to reinforce that this technology is giving X amount of benefits. Typically, this is there in the enterprise space. You know, we have POCs, you have ROI studies. Uh, education space, we don't have so much, but uh, there are studies available. Like at NBC, we've done a study uh, taking a digital campus and uh, on basis of parameters for uh, using the digital uh, uh, classroom uh, situation with smart detection and interactivity versus traditional means, what are the retention, comprehension of the students, different classes work done. We also done a study with 3D technology because I mean, that's a very emerging technology is how uh, for a different set of higher education uh, specific. And there are studies to prove uh, the benefits. But yes, the studies are limited and I think uh, you know we need to have more of those localized studies in India with Indian audience that will really help uh, the process. Uh, the other part is uh, about uh, the teacher aspect that we said that you know, the, you know and all that stuff. See that will always be there but I think what is the reality today is there is a nexus of convergent forces which is working. And Technology and disruptive technologies move so fast that within six months it will change the whole game, and that's what is happening today. Uh, we have social uh, forces of social uh, media. We have uh, mobile technology. You know, uh, there we have uh, cloud or you know big data, as as we may call it, and uh, the whole network technology. So these forces are impacting whether you are a consumer, standalone consumer. You are a enterprise organization or your educational institution. Because what's happening is today, uh, that let's talk about education perspective. I mean, uh, you know, most of the people, smartphone was not even a, 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 a phrase which we used to use three years back uh, till iPhone, uh, Steve Jobs, and unveiled iPhone. And I recollect this because I was watching the live show, and the first thing he did was to demonstrate the capability was. Uh, he took the iPhone and made a crank for, he made a call at the Starbucks. It was not about the spa, Starbucks call that he made, that probably they would have rehearsed it earlier. But I think what he said, that I'm play, placing order of 50,000 lattes and would have come and collected. That was the point. But the point was that how he opened the Maps application, how he located his location, how he located the closest Starbucks, clicked on it and got the telephone number and called it. So that brought in a completely different uh, area where all these convergent nexus forces are working and delivering something. And now today, you know, 50% uh, or maybe more than 50% of the work that we do on a phone, uh, uh, which we used to do on a PC, we are actually doing it on a phone. Or a, or, and same is happening. Tab there was no category like tablets. But and we have to understand that students today, the children today, they are at flux of this information overload. You know, they, they are accessing information in any way. So, uh, they are accessing it on maybe their uh, touch phones or smartphones or on the tablets or on the home PC or in a cyber cafe or wherever they, you know, we have to understand that our uh, the, the coming generation is always 3x forward than what we were, you know. And uh, I can give you an example of my house that my 8 year old daughter, uh, to ask a question, see, she just picks her iPad and say, I'm going to just go to Wikipedia and put a question. So, making students aware before they enter an engineering college and making them understand before they are about to graduate and sit for placement that what is it that you exa exactly want to do. Now, we were doing that for like getting as one of our clients, they are into very small segment hardware and networking. But we have given them in our LMS model tracking that these are your students who do better in printers. Like they have 180 sessions. So we've segregated them. These are hardware specific sessions. These are OS specific sessions. These are any specific workbook, Windows server specific. So then they filter out that, okay, these are the students who've been doing well in activities, presentations of printers. So when HP comes to hire, place, we, we talk to the placement of the, this lot better be your representative than you sending on the basis of overall grades because that's not what's gonna help. And if this person has got good grades in printers, it means sare ratte nahi maare hain, kahin na kahin interest hai uska. So this would be a better fitment. 
so it's all about bridging that gap creating awareness and similarly like look out for that one because i don't know how because i'm not an engineer so uh, i am an economics grad so during my mba what we would our batch would associate would be certain professors so we would always go back and say yaar hamare college mein 40 professors hain padhte hain 6 kaam ke hain unhi se sikha hai jo sikha hai and that is a fact so and then you associate those hain you heard about dr singh uh, we have attended this class और फिर पूछता है तुम्हारे अकाउंट्स वाले प्रोफेसर है उसको छोड़ो ना वो पढ़ा रहे हैं सो दैट इज व्हाट यू एसोसिएट विद सो इफ यू कैन हैव सर्टेन वीडियोस इफ दोस कैन बी कन्विंस एंड देयर लाइव सेशंस कैन बी रिकॉर्डेड दोस कैन बी लाइक यूज्ड इन द कैंपेन ओवर द वेयर बिकॉज व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट गोइंग टू यूएस और अदर कंट्रीज टू अंडरस्टैंड देयर एडमिशन प्रोसेस आई वाज रियली हैप्पी एंड अमेज्ड टू हियर when harvard business school people came over here to understand the kumbh mela and they have a fascination why is it that for a kumbh mela you have thousands lakhs of people walking over so these are the professors there are certain professors and we can actually go one step ahead and uh, make these colleges understand that you can open up avenues for international admissions also over the web if you are doing that ma- many institutes have started doing that for part time things but then we are talking about a different league and i don't know whether i'm right or wrong but every particular strategy would not be applicable to all colleges so it it, it has to be a complete filtration of if if those are 4500 engineering colleges uh, i relate more to b school so i'll talk about that so i am and spj and mdi fms these would be like one league then you'll have the league of imts imi and th- those institutes so if you talk about something like this to one league of these schools an imt or an imi would be a better buy to do this video sessions because that will be their usp to probably kill an im tomorrow and i am although is sitting at the top he may or may not bhai hamara to waise hi chal raha hai let it be and this is what like i have a perception about these schools and i don't know how much it relates to engineering college but this is what i had to share about this. i just thought that, you know uh, interesting discussions but from a very media perspective you know, we have one is a very niche title called engineering works the other we have business india which deals with the world of business corporate india corporate india means i let us come this corporate india lots of money Like in international presence, you know, that sort of muscle power. Right? Today is a pride, you know, we talk of any project, LNT for that matter. Now, actually, those people feature, you know, the vision of those captains, we feature them. Now, but that alone is not enough. You need the layer. You have this resource of 4,800 colleges. They all have spent tons of money on that infrastructure. They may be have may have been done by people who just thought. इतना लगाना है लगा दो क्या इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर चाहिए क्या इक्विपमेंट चाहिए सब लगा दो बेस्ट लगाओ बट सडनली दे फाउम बेस्ट लगाओ बट दैट बेस्ट इज हाउ डू रिफाइंड द बेस्ट एंड देन देर आफ्टर टू ईयर्स की भाई कोई यूज ही नहीं कर रहा है बिकॉज देर लॉट्स ऑफ थिंग्स लाइक दीज तो वॉट वी नीड टू डू इज नॉट लेट दिस मीटिंग वी वी जस्ट वन अनदर मीटिंग वी वी एक्चुअली फाइव टेन ऑफ आस टू आर लेट एस लुक एट इट दैट दी वर्ल्ड इज आर यू नो we can do anything now we have business india on one side we have engineering works on the other side now what are the things that we can simplify that we don't get lost in small small ideas and but we need to identify one is faculty who are brilliant in different parts of the country there can be one guy who can revolutionize the rest let us try to identify 10 people either on the technology side or the use itself each can you see me provide some very interesting leads So when we do the next feature you know, on this, we are able to write to them the, what we have had today, and we say, look, we are looking for better cases and maybe some ideas that you have, and do a Skype or whatever the editors want to do, and just take a one-line quote, giving them a summary of what we feel, but we still want you to suggest. Now that way we have great articulators who may sometimes even go against what we think, <coughs> but the public then makes its own view. The public is your engineering colleagues. what that man says make lot of sense 
So we are the platform which is neutral. What you said is very right that we shouldn't get involved in which vendors and all that. It's a very dangerous situation for media. Uh, but if we can use this platform to make the best come together and debate it. In fact, I would say that you know now that five of you are there in technology, let us have once in two months a meeting in this place. Evening six o'clock it starts. We have a little cocktail or whatever. Complete everything, but just networking. And one guy on technology is just take the chair and say, "This is what I'd like to present in ten minutes." So you don't bore anybody. And then there's network. And you would see the electricity that flows after that. So the idea of media is to be a neutral platform, be a communicator. So whatever is the idea of one and all, they get a presence in that. And and at one level, engineering work does it. The summary is taken by business media. Because business media will not be able to dedicate more than a page, maybe once in two months or three months, because it's dealing with the entire universe of it. But I think we will get great writers, great articulators, great illustrators, and and the whole partnership of engineering works and business media will work beautifully. The other thing is go viral, go wait for business media even, whatever you have captured here, go intensely and talk to ILFS and say that we just want a session with you because you have spoken all the. NBC and and just get you know these people to speak, keep these videos intact, edit them, keep them ready. When you have hundreds of videos, then then the rest will follow you. They will say that we have a point of view. The media is like when I started Express Computer, I did that. I got Dinesh Natarajan when he was with Aptek, 1994, early stages of Aptek. We had LC Singh from uh, TCS. Now he has got Nihil in Technologies. So a lot of these people, we made them our champions. We were not knowing everything about IT. I mean, I was running Indian Express. I did not have much to do. But I said, "Tell me, roj ka paper print karo, roj apne ko dhanda karna hai. We have to get that much business to make even." Then I said, "I don't want to be in this. I'd like to be involved with groups of people who are very intense." You know, so FC Kohli was there. He was like the magnet. You know, I said, "FC is one of our patrons." Instantly, people would say, "FC Kohli, how does he come?" And he used to always ask me, "Sir, how do you manage thirty publications?" You know, that was a big thing. I say, "I don't manage. I delegate it on first day. I get a good editor. He does the thing. I'm I'm the cover for the editor. So when the editor gets trapped or so, he says that economics sort of ask us to do it. I mean, it's a black hole. Indian experts are so they they have somehow feeling that this man must be knowing everything. How the country is run? What are the problems? A lot of people ask, "What do you think about this party?" Actually, I have no thought. <laughs> because you know, what do you say? It, it's such a complex situation. But earlier you could predict politics. Now you can't because everything is a 50-50 chance. Which party will come? You can't say. So you are just discussing. It. But we take advantage of our position as media people and say, "Take care." I may not know, but my friend Raghav is an engineer from IIT. He understands this. So that is how collaboration works. So if, if someone comes and says, you know. I love that. Education. Talk to him, man. He knows. At least he'll he'll give you the right path. Whether he's with I love us or not, he'll give you that. We have this eight, ten people here, like our core today. We get to hundred people on technology. They become like our articulator. They will just take one area of observation, just a para of what they observe in technology and use it. Just give them a small task. You tabulate it, like you what you did when you sent me this on the website. I went to the link and took out. Everybody's view on certain media is just one one para because who has the time to read? So if you can, if you can think that you have the best, most credible paper on one side, and you see the energy that surges in you, and you have Engineering Watch as a you know, I mean the name Engineering Watch says it all. Your domain is there clearly. The stakeholders are very clear. I think you form part of it. If you get into printing your own publication, you reach out to be tough. It'll be like your brochure, but if you go via engineering watch, it becomes again a credible. But then to remain credible, you need to, you know, come to the crux of the matter. You can't waste time. You need to say it in video, not in just in two three pages of what you know. So nobody reads today. The, the younger generation, even the person who is deciding on what to buy, it is that one attractive you know video that tells it all. So maybe a sample, maybe something that's worked with you know any C or so. Which you show your clients. Let us try to make that and showcase. Maybe somebody defies it and says it's not so good. I've, I've seen something better. So we are not promoting them. We just tell it. We are putting the fire. And I think media plays the catalyst role. Art to laga de kam se kam. Sir, debate hoga. Jaise kya ho? 
if we know that there is nothing coming out, we will change to another subject. But I think we are a very strong subject of inquiry. And I think once we make that noise and the first one to run a campaign, and we have the stalwarts of the engineering sector say we will change it, I think things will happen. These six people came on our campaign. We gave our own Indian Express because Indian Express, we were in the same house, same place in Bombay. We ran a campaign in Indian Express, we ran a campaign in Express Country. Same way when we did Hotelier Caterer, we did something for that, we again took some pain points of the industry, ran a campaign. So I'm, what I'm trying to say is that if we get all the five, six areas, we get a good agency, a digital agency, so that we are not dependent on one magazine, but we go viral and say these are the issues, engineering, what you first want to take up. And these are our champions, ILF, restaurants, so yes, and two million bikes. So he will electrify. You know, other guys will feel sad that he was not who has been arrogant in that. I think today's meeting is very important. It is just not it's just the beginning, but it will lead you to so many more areas of introspection. And once after you have done two, three rounds of this, you will find all the ministers and people, all of them because they see they want to be where action is. Engineering college will listen now because they have a big problem on their hands. Lack of students, what do they do? Aap batao kya karna hai. Couple so, of authorities, huh. no single authority is putting money. Apne apne norms hai, I think you become a credible to. factor that people will say, I think we need to listen, otherwise we are out of business. That is the only time people read and listen. How can technology company partner with engineering watch? I mean, just take one page for every technology company. Tell us in one page. Everything that you have to see, it's very difficult right? to write a page, you know, you have stories to tell, but how can you mention, attention span should be 500 words, how do you tell with, it, with one visual? I think this is a very interesting case there. We can do the collation of all the best technology companies which are something to showcase and let it be not in an order of, you know, one, two, three, four or first hundred. So one thing you can add, uh, probably if I can make a suggestion mm -hmm. for what you should do next is uh, from all your existing uh, engineering colleges, mm -hmm. uh, dig up the best practices in use of technology Absolutely. Right? and showcase them like you were showcasing uh, the silver coffee table. Right? So, uh, so give them a little importance saying that, okay, these 10 or these 20 uh, colleges are using technology in a very, very you know, uh, uh, good manner and, and this is the advantages that have come out of it. Let others see that. Ah. Yeah. So, rather than, rather than us vendors ah, uh, saying that ah, ah, vendors, yes, you pick up, it should be a part, pick up some, uh, some colleges which are doing it. I'm sure there are quite a few of them. Put them and select the showcases. Let them learn. Select the showcases based, not just based on, you know, this guy, this, this college has, you know, 100 projectors or 100. Yeah. You really use the yeah. yeah. faculty, the students, yeah. everybody. Because then otherwise you'll be, you know, just putting something which is against what you are discussing. Numbers are if numbers will be confused. Yeah. Not the so quantity just, sold, but yes. the usage of the, the usage. Usage. The real where the the best practices. Usage and feedback. These are the best practices in the use of technology in engineering colleges. And then you can get people like us to comment on that Absolutely. and saying okay this is how you can improve it yeah this is how you can scale it so those kind of things moreover like more of the uh, servers are also, also reluctant to adopt yeah, a new technology because they don't want to teach the other we need to educate people also like we identify those colleges with best practices hmm. but we have that person say who is the major influencer of the college to whom people associate with to whom people listen to so for those 20 colleges, if you can have like one or two reps each, that should be it. Because choosing that influencer will also be the key. Also, carry something or you know, invest some more money in marketing and 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 marketing uh, as an independent, as an engineering watch uh, perspective, I think you should also come out with the uh, open, uh, you know, open, uh, uh, unbiased opinion as to when we talk about technology, what do we need to think about, and these are the future trends and how a technology future proof is important for decisions today. Because see, we have to understand the investments that engineering colleges make. It's not that every year they're going to buy that; they're going to probably buy it for three years, five years, or even more. So there is the budgeting and all those things. 
and the decisions that they make, they got to take into consideration that how this investment is going to be also future proof because there are technology trends like uh, somebody was talking about uh, the software uh, uh, liquid people were talking about uh, how they developed the you know uh, SaaS kind of application but actually have to deploy it on a LAN on a wide network because of the bandwidth issue but they also know that tomorrow the next three years time this bandwidth issue may not be there because yeah. already we have uh, telecom students don't have the challenge projects to work upon so maybe one student uh, a state we have 16 technical universities so probably maybe some of the uh, organizations can give such projects to those colleges so what we are trying somewhere to find out is in the digital projection technology space or probably in the language learning space or probably in the laboratory equipment space because what happens is the, such magical solutions are there but they are not known I, I have a very classical example of Kian. The moment I was not aware of it, I was not aware of it. But the moment I got aware of it, I was really fascinated about it and I, I have started advocating it at multiple platforms. It's such a fantastic tool. It is designed for the Indian circumstances. If I just take a project and it doesn't work, it's all in on. I mean, what Hindustan ki jubar zarurat hai, wo sab puri karta hai. So that is the whole idea to create a credible platform. Not for people like who are running and going and uh, selling some uh, solutions which are just, uh, I will say, copycats or just to use the opportunity. The idea is if we can identify some five, ten such segments. Because every now and then, when we talk to these uh, college chairmen and people, yeah, har din koi na koi aata hai. Right. If they have a problem, they don't have to say anything every day, they don't have to say anything. The assessment has become a big uh, euphoria around the assessment. If you do the assessment, my child will be tired, I don't know. मेरा यूपी यू का इंतहान देता है या कोई भी यूनिवर्सिटी का इंतहान मुझे पता है कि जो पर्सन उसकी अंग्रेजी खराब है तो व्हाट आर यू डूइंग अबाउट इट एंड हाउ क्रेडिबली यू कैन डू अबाउट इट सर सर कि भाई अगर हम स्टडीज दे रहे हैं वी कैन जॉइन टुगेदर अ कपल ऑफ सॉल्यूशंस हम कहें कि भाई देर इज एन इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज टेक्नोलॉजी प्रोवाइडर पिकअप इट देर इज एन असेसमेंट प्रोवाइडर आप उसका बेसलाइन सोल्यूशन ले लो और उसका ट्रेनिंग ले लो और फिर वंस द ट्रेनिंग इज ना फिर आप उसका असेसमेंट कर लो so that kind of innovative permutations and combinations of technologies are probably called for. So uh, I think I mean, what you have to say on that. See, uh, Raghav, I'll add a little more to that. Uh, it's very difficult to say that this is better than the other. Yes, salespeople will argue to no end saying that no, my product is better, no, my product is better. But that aside, uh, I don't think anyone can truly say that whether uh, a, a television can be a better learning tool or a projector can be a better learning tool, each has its advantages and disadvantages. And there has to be room in the industry for all of them, right? Mm -hmm. As an example, uh, let's take clothing, right? So there is a Nike, there is an Adidas, there is all these other people. Uh, there is no one standard, mm -hmm. right? Each one makes their products, uh, they have different clientele. Some cl clients like uh, Nike because the color is nice, some clients will like Adidas because the fit is nice. Uh, the same uh, will be in any particular industry. So even in, in the kind of industry that we are operating in, for some colleges, a Kian will be a good fit. In some colleges, they want something nailed to the wall, so a whiteboard will be a, a better fit. So I don't think uh, you should try and define uh, which is better and which is uh, not as good. Right? No, we are not, not trying so, to define uh, the value judgment. We are right. not doing, trying to do that. What we are trying to simply learning is these are the possible areas, these are the possible and you want to advocate upon the projection technologies a must in today's digital age where a classroom is connected. You know, I don't, I don't agree with you entirely because uh, uh, yes, I do have a projection based product, right? But right now I'm not sitting here as a salesman. So uh, I don't think that it's necessary to have a projection uh, you know, based system. Some people will argue projection is, is ancient. You know, it's an old technology, it's going away. Uh, walls are uh, becoming interactive. Right? So you don't really need anything projection. You can have a large format television, you can have large format displays connected together and you know that becomes a really, really big, uh, big display without projection. So uh, not to say that projection is can't be used. Right? So what I'm trying to say is that uh, it's not necessary that projection is uh, a better uh, mm -hmm. learning technology and, and, and LCD television is older or whatever. So they all have their advantages and disadvantages and they will all have their dishes in their their sales. So they will continue to sell, right? The projector will sell, the television will sell, and any other display technology will also sell. So 
there isn't any any one uh, more or less than the other. Adding to Al Kursi, uh, from a technology evangelist perspective, I don't care a lot as a NEC rep because when NEC makes a lot of projectors, we supply a lot of projectors to smart classes. We also supply back. We also supply NCBs. But I think from a technology uh, uh, perspective, let's not get caught into the devices. Mm -hmm. You know, end of the day, exactly. a projector or a PV or a commercial grade panel or a video board or whatever is just a device or, or, a, or a tablet is a device, a PC is a device, smartphone is a device. So I don't think that's the criteria. Device will come, device will go, maybe at a single period of five years, four devices may be there and the next uh, ten years, three may go, two may, <coughs> some new technology yeah. comes in. End of the day, it is the use of the core technology. I think one thing is digitization is reality and digitization helps in uh, uh, retention and collaboration and interactivity. That is a de facto. Now, how do we combine uh, and uh, what is the device front end? That's not a part of it. Uh, interactivity is a technology which will help because education, learning is an interactive process. It can't be one side process. So, interactivity will learn. So, whether that interactivity is delivered through an interactive whiteboard which has a projector and a you know board and, or it is delivered through a NCD panel which is interactive through touch or actually tomorrow technology comes and you have a wall, a video wall or something. Yeah. Does it, does it, or even your tablet is interactive, yeah. right? It doesn't yeah. matter, but interactivity, digitization is there. So these are realities, uh, there. 3D is reality uh, and I think in the coming time it will be more persuasive, which is going to be more ubiquitous because you know, we have to be very clear how uh, technology, you can tap how the technology usage is going. Consumer devices are the best indicators. Sometimes it's, it's off, off also, but I think because 3D is coming everywhere, you, you talk about in all consumer electronics company and they will say, we have a 3D television. You talk about uh, uh, 3D, uh, now they have a device, but where is the content? So the big question in 3D is the content. So now TV channels, are making 3D content, they are making specific 3D channels coming up, phones and smart devices are becoming much easier. Same as the education world, people are working on 3D content. So once that ecosystem is ready, that will be more possible. But that is a technology which will help education, yes, specifically very much so for higher education. Education to architectural engineering, in uh, computer engineering, uh, GIS systems, it is there. It's, it's a reality because that's what the industry uses it. So that's uh, there. So these couple of technologies are going to be there. How it is going to be delivered, what device is there, I think, you know, uh, that will come and go and whatever is the best fit uh, to that particular uh, uh, educational institution, depending on various parameters of technology, ease of use, price points, whatever, will matter. So let's not get into uh, that part, but I think this uh, technology piece is there. I think what we need to concentrate is, what are the pain areas in deploying this technology? Right? So the pain areas is that we don't want, uh, and I think that's I think uh, there's a lot of commitment which is required from the vendors, from the OEMs, from, from the people who are providing solutions. That uh, this is not this if, if it is a one time transactional sale, and I think everybody gets caught into that transactional sale thing, then this doesn't evolve. Right? This doesn't grow. So the, we have to take the pain out, and we the, the first thing is uh, is that we should take end-to-end -end ownership of sharing the benefits, the information, how it works, deploying it smoothly and hand-holding the, the users of this group because until the teachers feel confident of using this technology, until they start utilizing this technology and create the content and really utilize it, until the students really see the benefits and enjoy using this technology, this is not going to go to the next level. So we have to concentrate on how do we take them into the handhold and take it, take it forward and not want the education institution to be a mini IT department. We don't want them to hire IT manager with two system engineers actually figuring out, uh, you know, how, how the whole 3D thing works and talk to 10 different people and enable it. So I think from our uh, technology point, I think that's what we need to focus on. A couple of steps there are is that if, if as a technology uh, provider, as an integrator, we do the de-risking. We say that, okay, this is a reference of architecture. This is a packaged certified solution where we talk to, uh, so for example, like a 3D thing, the complete package is given. So there is a workstation. We have already pre, uh, pre-configured the 3D graphics card, which is appropriate to run. Uh, the gigabyte of RAM, blah, blah, which is required, typically run uh, CAD CAM GIS kind of applications. There is a certification there, so everything runs. The kind of uh, uh, device uh, which is required for uh, projecting, it will be a 3D projector for five 
a seater for maybe less than 3000 lumens, a higher 10 seater above 3000, 3500 lumens for a theater, it could be different. Or it could be a 3D screen, it doesn't matter. But you know, the device, but you package the visual uh, display unit, you package the the engine which is going to run, you package the appropriate card, and you have certifications in place with the leading uh, ISVs who actually, whose applications the education is going to use, and you have the peripherals also integrated, the glasses or active glasses, passive glasses, whatever. And you say, this is my reference architecture, this is my certified thing, I will impart, and it's just not a sale. Put in the uh, training program with it, put in the orientation program with it, have a hand-holding session, and that's how this, the benefits will become. Same as where, uh, with, with interactivity, and uh, smart class or, or the interactive portion is just not about, you know, interacting. It's again, now the ecosystem will expand. The ecosystem will expand to include uh, portable lightweight devices, we may call it tablets or iPads today, it could be anything, it, it could be whatever form factor, we don't know. There could be content providers actually providing the content over cloud and you just actually, there will be mobile apps or there will be tablet apps sitting here, you actually connect to a subscription based content provider and download it and start running. So that, that smart class thing is, is not just a projection device or a PC and, and a whiteboard, it is going to evolve into uh, uh, you know, uh, it could be your uh, interactive LCD, whenever the technology is ready at the price point, it could be uh, people like tablets coming into the place. Uh, so that devices may change, but I think the big focus is from a technology point is focus on the technology pieces, focus on taking the pain out and having that complete training and holding process. Uh, because if, if the users don't use it and realize the benefit and they're not excited about it, I don't think they're going to uh, you know, I think that's the worst nightmare even from a sales perspective. You don't want to do one quarter, right? You want to do quarter on quarter, year on year. So I think it's in our interest, uh, you know, to see that this thing works and then the, uh, you know, this replicates. See, I'd like to share because uh, representing a content company, when we were to start with deploying of English learning language, we had two options, land-based deployment model or a web-based deployment model. Obviously, a web-based deployment model gives you further greater reach. But when we analyzed the bottlenecks, we analyzed even in tier 1 towns, they are facing problems with respect to internet. So we are operating majorly on a land-based model and we are working with a USP. A USP of tracking the usage data of the trainer as well as the learners. So because there are centers, there are clients who have 100 centers across the country, but they say that our centers, we are not sure that they would be adopting this technology to teach or not. So we are sharing with them till the time the trainer logs in, from the time he logs in, till the time he logs out. On what page, how much time he spent, and then we have a training manual. Like it's just a basically sort of a structure that on this particular page you have to spend these many minutes to teach a thing, 15 minutes is for an activity, interactive session. So those are the kind of reports that we share with our clients and that helps them track their trainers better at the same time that also ensures that in which particular center the learners are not practicing. Because English is a product that unless you practice, that won't help. And because we are selling English language to those partners as a, as a medium of employability, because tomorrow your domain may be anything, but English will improve the probability of your employability. So, so that is one POD that we are working with in terms of tracking. Now off late we came up with a new product of tablet learning. Again, devices can be many, but that was completely targeted to the school segment. Now the bottlenecks that we faced there were that you are catering to a class size of average 35 to 40 people. So you want 40 tablets. They, they do a cost benefit analysis and the, and the tablet of Samsung which has a better battery life that crosses 19k. Micromax DJ sir, 7000. Now when you give a 7000, the battery life of a Micromax is very low. So it can last only a couple of hours at the max. So for a session of one hour, then we devise uh, a trolley, a trolley in which you can stock 40 tablets and you can stock it in a manner that while they are stocked, through a single point they can be charged. So you leave that on charge, the class comes in, so the trolley is there, 
the students are handed over the tablets so it's nothing to do with the device but then we have an encryption there so the trainer locks the tablets of all the learners teaches how whatever he wants to teach and then when it is a teach back session in which they say okay now this is an activity session say uh, the first topic is introduction this is hi i am nitin hi i am gautam so then they say ki now you record your voice and then you listen the voice and then you listen the ideal pronunciation so that is how now it has nothing to do with using a tablet or a smartphone for the same but it's the trainer should be trained enough to adopt this and imbibe this so that he can make students do this the main problem has been awareness and adoption to technology like for example one of our clients he is using projectors in metros even in metros he has certain centers which are say in govindpuri area so those are the centers where they are using splitters so they have on one pc the trainer sits and they have a splitter technology so on other pcs the student can't do anything else but he can watch the content on other centers they have lcds so irrespective as long as the trainers are keen to use that methodology i think that is the major key and uh, long time back ankur also shared that it's about making aware and counseling the students who come for engineering similarly there is another stage when the engineers are to that matter any other b school grad also passes out what is in their mind i guess more or less it's the placement the package so that particular thing also needs to be matched that they need to be counseled that what is it that you actually want to do because it's completely a vicious circle companies will come to colleges and pick out more numbers if their previous picked up students or recruits did better and they will do better only if the person wants to stick to that and there have been various researches in in those interesting sites called pagal guy and all which clearly state that many people who go after packages more or less leave the organization their first organization within 6 to 9 months carriers and new broadband companies talk about that the rates of 3g and all are coming down so today we have so tomorrow the, the principal thing is when you select a technology piece whether it's a software piece or a hardware piece how much ready today is it uh, for the future so whether the vendor has made a uh, software based subscription today or a load block stuff but is this piece that they are evaluating is the architecture such that it can move seamlessly into a saas model into a cloud model and that's one Uh, today you are uh, incorporating uh, hardware pcs uh, you know uh, projectors or whatever but tomorrow again your if your campus becomes wifi is your investment today really going to be capable enough to uh, with a minimal uh, disruption be able to take advantage of this because tomorrow in 3 years time you going to have wifi campuses you going to have tablets coming in the faculty may be use, using stuff but is your projector becoming a bottleneck to it or is your screen becoming a bottleneck is any of the computer becoming a, they don't have capability so i think uh, when you develop uh, best practices references talk also about uh, you know how uh, these things are to be developed technology options is part the the, the you know, whether it's future ready for technologies which are com- coming disruptive in nature so that it also uh, positions you as a as a body where people can look up to and say yeah this 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 makes sense and i should you know when i'm making a decision they they got the engineering watch article and say okay so let's let's be uh, you know look at these points because uh, they are relevant to so make sense uh, for us i think you know being a media platform especially with that passion that you have because you're trying to communicate with all the stakeholders in a fair manner there's a very big onus that is there you know? and uh, that's something that we can we can use very well If you are new areas, you don't need too much. You just have to quote a very interesting on technology, edu technology. Edu tech is one very very vast area. It goes beyond everything. So if you can, if you can bring on that platform everybody to quickly give you a one terabyte. You know, just say selected two hundred people that you identify with the people that we have. Here. Maybe you suggest a few people. Then the faculty is very important because they are they are the ones doing it. So you look at the faculty that has actually helped in learning and doing that. All these things you need to tabulate, you create the things, make it very simple and easy for them to do it. Give them a lure that you will be invited to the next seminar in the same business area complex, whatever you want. See, we have together we can make it happen. So the next time when 
our friends come in, they, they are very excited to meet those guys who are, you know, even 10 of them, it's not necessary, but you know, you select out of the many that you'll be, say, you know, we'll get somebody to sponsor, they'll come all over here, we'll, you know, sort of, we need to create this uh, thinking hub for people who love to come, at least jitne dur aayen hai, so petrol ke badle mein, we have got some, you know, you know, hassles hai yaha neka, that should be covered by the great audience they meet. And that's one thing I have done. I used to have Express Towers lawns, and there was our own lawn at Express Towers. So I used to just tell anyone, they said, this is a very good lawn, you have to party to make it. So they said, you have to call us. We had 30 publications. There was a no-fake body, professionals, so and so, you know, recruiters or something. I said, I like you. So we had to meet them, but they asked me, don't words from you. So I used to just use that platform to evangelize that I have 30, now we are going to 31st one on HR. So the HR ka kaan dekho, why body bol dekho, hum loo kar dekho. So that is the way we build it, you know. Suddenly you find that your technology writing will come from people who are already there. And they will say, bear in mind that they are wearing two caps. One is of NEC, one is a cap of engineering board. You get this whole team, almost, and you have, by God's grace, you have some great practitioners and some great practitioners are elucidators. They can write in. In fact, in 500 words, what matters they can do. Because there are too many words, nobody will do. If they need to read, then we print a separate book on technology, which can be engineering watch, which we can go into details. And that's for the select group. So I think we have a great occasion today, and our friend has done some very interesting on the, I think, what you have talked of. It's amazing, I mean, we talked even before we went. And I think we must not let it go like this. You know, this is our first community meeting um, for this kind of technology. I don't know whether you've had any further. But it's a very major issue of all and K. Yan, I saw it when the promoter of that invited me at IIT <laughs> Bombay. Who is that? Kirti <laughs> Dehri. He's a dear friend of mine. He did Jansatta. That time he was doing some ergonomical study or so. He said, I'm going to present the design of Jansatta. And he took what he only wanted Devnagiri. He said, I'll not do Indian Express. I'll do Jansatta. <laughs> and that man took me and he has a young team. He has started a company with people who just passed out. Gaurav and that logo and all that. And if there anything you want, they will do it for you. That's a company that they run, is to, you know, train me as well. So, amazing chap, and he showed me KAR, and then my mind blew up. I'm talking of how many years back? It must have been 2000, yeah, that time I went and I went to meet him. And he just told me some questions. When I told him about design of the newspaper, no, no, we are way ahead of that. Please don't talk of design. Design you did in 1994, 95, then Sattah launched and redesigned the said, Now we are on something more interesting. And then he gave me a future edge ka ke note bhi banaya ki now that you are you know one of the captains of industry why don't you do one thing we will only have a newsletter which which tells everything to all these hundred captains or two thousand captains the subscription is X Y Z I mean he is talking of that language and then K Yan I blew my mind I said does this exist is it for the rural areas that is the time I came to him. then he cut an article and gave me but unfortunately we were always involved with so many things that he could not take me. But for a media person, it's always exciting, you know, these type of things. So it's not whether it's AM or something, but at that time it was so new. <coughs> I mean, this one box, you can carry it anywhere, and he was telling that electricity, rahe, nahi rahe, he had several, it was everything bundled in that manner. But the way he presented it, it's amazing. I and mean, he's fond of me, so you know, he knows, because Express maybe, when we did the redesign, we had Arun Shuri and all those people, you know, so that was the time. I'm talking of 1993, 94, when it came for the Tensor so, you know, let us not lose track of that. I mean, whatever is our, you can now sum it up in whichever manner or if there is any more info. But I think we have met at a very, very, uh, you know, let us make the best. Some of you have not spoken. Why don't you, you know? No, sir, I am agree on that. Uh, we just need to, just common things uh, to like push in uh, education industry from all other. Uh, a little bit about which company and all that. I am from the new side, sir. We are the distributors. Uh, in, uh, so, which is your the best client that you have who's using this technology to the full? Just uh, three, four people. Uh, they are using our new products. Okay. And before uh, you do come, what you do? Okay. So, these are publishers who are using it? Oh, no, they are using the uh, complete solution. Oh. S chance, 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 S
plus two. They cover plus two. I am just uh, talking because I, I would, that is the first, we shouldn't miss this opportunity of knowing everybody. Right. You know, so some of them I bet, but you, know, you can always, so that's, uh, you know. So the customers The idea is to use this, if you have an articulation problem, engineering mm -hmm. what will do the polishing, you know, of your thoughts. Exactly. Just two lines. So okay. that, so that you know, you appear, you know, to the audience that you are trying to say. I am just giving you a synergy. It's not that you are. Know. So you need to. And after, please, 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 so, uh, uh, our major uh, business is for engineering colleges only. Oh, even this hardware equipment lab equipment. Okay. And every engineering college. Chemistry labs or physics? All yeah. the physics, physics and electronics and electronic okay. Not for the chemistry lab. So, every engineering college has a equipment from us. So, so you are your market leader. Yeah. You have equipment or develop, uh, content? We have a content department also, but we basically started company with the equipment part. Okay. So, Majority of our business is from the uh, hardware so part. Just give me some few names of equipment that you would have. So mainly oscilloscope, function generator, multimeter, power supply. These are the basic which are uh, scientific equipment. Scientific equipment. Even those gauge. Yeah. Yeah. Gauge yeah. 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 That is also for the physics part. Whatever calibers. 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 LED lights, and we are MNRE channel partner also. We give 30% subsidy also. So okay. our equipment are MNRE product, we are channel partner for the uh, MNRE. So we have a solar lantern, street light, LED lamps, garden lamps, halogen lamps, we manufacture that also. Mm -hmm. And the third aspect is the digital content we give. We have been giving to, like, we have been discussing with liquid also earlier on, mm -hmm. and extra marks, <coughs> extra things. So now you are not alone. You are business India. And if there is anything good, yeah. just let us know if there is yeah. any function. Now we are together. Yeah, we, so we have a. Communicate. Uh, uh, all India, 18 offices are all across India. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Head office is in Indore, but I look after the. You can yeah. mention to your officers if you met someone from Business India. I mean, just, just tell them right. you are excited. Right. What will happen is that you know they will own self, you know, then. Yeah. See, being a knowledge company or an assimilator or whatever, it's a very big thing. <laughs> you know. So if you have that. You can influence your clients. If you say engineering, watch, they'll be very happy. Yeah. So you read our, you know, what we have done. We are totally a technical, a technical company, and we have we have an R and D team, and uh, we manufacture our own products. Okay. It's around 500 people only manufacturing the equipment. My God, this is a big thing. I and for we engineering, watch. If he's totally in the engineering space, you must you must take vendors, you know, one one profile. And of people who do the brilliant work, and we export to around 55 countries. Now this one, who knows how many? There will be somebody saying, "Itna galat, achhi hoga." That is Indian company. Totally Indian company. I am just telling you how media thinks. You know, I am just putting it because I want this to be the best publication for engineering. Because there is so much to gain from this. If they can, if they can build that, they have already started the process with you know three interactions, the last bit of awards and all that. I think it's amazing. I am very excited. Anyone else who has not spoken? आप नहीं बात की। I am from the engineering watch only। अच्छा। तो आप बताइए। इस बात के। इस बात के। At least कुछ तो बोलिए। Anyway, I mean, I just leave the। And somewhere I think the core of it, what Gurdjieff sir has reiterated across the technological bouquet we had been looking for, somewhere like internet, what sir said, digitization. Interactivity, 3D, and content. So probably these are the five core areas which have emerged out of it. And uh, some of the, I will say, <coughs> the suggestions which have come across, like future proofing of the technological solutions, that's an area. And uh, maybe we will work further on this technological bouquet. And the idea was like colleges don't even know what kind of technologies are actually happening. Someone comes with something and they don't have that kind of a holistic view. So the idea was somewhere to figure out this entire bouquet out of which, okay, first year you have this, second year you can have this, a larger framework. So for example, many of the colleges don't have their own digital identities on the internet. They don't even know about Google Apps or Microsoft Lighter, they do things like that, solutions like that. So the whole 
idea behind the Sedu Tech campaign is like to educate the colleges uh, and schools largely on the larger technological bouquet which is being offered. It will be device agnostic, but at least you will be telling like in the projection space or in the display space, you have these three options. In the content space, these are the kind of options which we have. How to figure out between a 3D content or a 2D content? How does it uh, differentiate between the two? So that is the effort which we felt is on a focused manner. Like as sir said, like uh, we should uh, cover up the stories, success stories, but also some kind of surveys. Like how many colleges are technologically saturated? What kind of budgets they have put in for their uh, e-upgradation? How many e-classes they have? So that kind of numbers will also help out. Everybody will want process. to know what the other guy has done. So what you do is very important. So for example, NPTEL, for example, they have a database with 600 colleges out of the 4,500 are running NPTEL. So now that stats in itself is very exciting. Now we can go to those 600 because communicating everything to the 4,500 chunk every time is difficult. Now out of those 600, what is the kind of usage of NPTEL which is having so big of government spending? So such kind of exciting uh, uh, activities are on the angle for this academic session to come. And probably together we can certainly make some difference uh, with these focused activities and we will keep on uh, requesting you to come out here for yeah. one on one interactions as well to explain in greater detail about their product offerings because device centric thought is also important because what a single device can do, what a solution can do, the other might not be able to do and one solution or one approach might transform a particular subject or a particular domain uh, for that matter. So I would like to thank you all for your coming and we will uh, take forward. You can uh, use this another 10 minutes just to meet each other for our uh, film, whatever, you know, at least get to know. Yes. And, uh,